sound speeds. And if you're interested in production sound and are a bit on the novice side, then you've probably gone to some place like Amazon looking for a cheap boom pole. But how good is one of those $60 Amazon boom poles? Can you get good sound out of them at all? Well, by trade and profession, I'm a boom operator. I'm the guy that holds the pole with a microphone over the actor's heads, amongst other things. And if there's anything I do know, it is boom poles. So I'm going to open up a $60 newer boom pole from Amazon and see exactly how good it is and maybe show you a couple of tweaks that you can do to try to get better sound out of it if it's pretty bad. I have not even opened up the box, so we're going to do that together. And in case you haven't figured out by now, I'm going to be doing this in <laughs> candid mode and cutting towards my throat, which is a brilliant thing to do, a great way to start off this video. But at least you know you're getting a genuine reaction here, right? Okay, so let's see this thing. Well, NW088 is the model number. Okay, you know, I don't do unboxings, but we're going to at least see what this thing has to offer. Most boom poles that are professional models come in sort of a bag. They don't come in a box. And this is coming in a box. First thing I'll say is it's very heavy, probably because it's aluminum. Cheaper boom poles are usually made of aluminum out of necessity because you want to make a cheap boom pole and it's got to be strong enough to hold a microphone, including a Zeppelin, or as you might refer to it as a blimp. And so we'll... Uh, Aluminum is one of the cheaper options that is at least strong. Get these boxes out of the way. Okay, that way we can at least do this officially. Okay, they are giving us a 3816 thread with an adapter to modify from a 3816 thread to a 5827 thread. That's for like a mic stand. And I'll tell you this. I anticipated them doing something goofy like that. Those kinds of adapters right there are for adapting something like a boom pole to a clip like this. Like if you were going to have a microphone that you're going to be using on a stage, for example, singing or a large diaphragm microphone of some sort. That's the kind of thing you would use with uh, a uh, 5827 on the bottom. You're not going to use that on any kind of a boom pole shock mount. I'm not expecting a gift to the planet here on this. Okay, I've now gotten the plastic off of this thing and the cable is twist tied on there. First thing I will note is the cable is obviously one of those generic ones that you can find uh, on the kinds of microphones that you would get from uh, newer. So this is a, it's like a, an imitation switch, switchcraft connector. I don't know how good that thing is. We'll at least give it a shot. The cable feels pretty well. It's tied off with a little bit of strain relief, which is not uncommon to see. Let's see how this uh, unscrews at the tip, if at all. Does it have a screw? No? Well, let's take that down there and let's see if we can unscrew this. Yikes. Jeez, that segment is... Oh, this is not going to be fun. I... <laughs> this thing doesn't even sound right. That could just be the coiled cable on the inside, let's hope. Uh, this is stuck. I'm not able to get this undone. So it's at least going to be on there. Now, this is an internally coiled cable boom. Okay, the disadvantage of aluminum is that it is very susceptible to cold weather. So at the time of this video, it's cold. And if I took this outside, it's going to be freezing. This room right now that I'm in is about 63 degrees and... This is probably probably like 58. So this is even colder than the room is. So it's kind of funny. Oh geez, this doesn't even sound good. Okay. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let's get it. Uh, that's a chore, even when it's fully unlocked. Okay, let's go way unlock. It still doesn't move. Are you hearing that squeal? Oh no. Oh, this sucks. <sighs> Feels like a toy, let the truth be known. Uh, cheaper materials like the aluminum this is made of 
transmit a lot of handling noise. And so what a lot of manufacturers will do is they'll put foam on the outside so they don't actually have to address the issue of handling noise. They can just say, oh, look, we've done it in a very cheap way. I mean, you're not going to hear any handling noise through a, che a cheap piece of foam that's on the outside. All right, here's one thing that I'm going to point out that's really bad. They put their branding in white letters on the boom pole itself. If it's if you're shooting against glass windows, for example, and it's daylight outside, no problem. If it's nighttime outside, that window becomes a mirror and it reflects back inside. Now, if someone's in front of that mirror, then or <laughs> window, then you can put black up behind you. Hopefully the DP will let you do that and wear black clothes and you will be out of focus deep in the background. But if you have something like white letters, you're supposed to put tape over it so that way it doesn't reflect the camera. This is an issue right here because you cannot put it on the phone. So you're going to have to turn it away from camera and manage that, you know, as best as possible. Machined aluminum looks kind of on the sloppy side. It's lopsided, actually, let the truth be known. The knuckles are made of plastic and they're not very effective. Normally booms, you would only have to rotate about maybe a quarter of a turn at most in order to get it to lock fairly decently. Okay, that was a pressure, that was a bit of pressure on there and that's about three quarters of a turn. So if I wanted to lock, okay, now it's locked. One quarter turn back, nope. Quarter turn back, nope. Quarter turn back, nope. Quarter turn back, okay, ow. <laughs> Okay, so this thing has a bite too. <laughs> this cheap segment, now it's not gonna lock again without me going all the way around this thing. This thing is junk. <laughs> Come on, open. <laughs> oh man. All right, let's see if we can actually get this thing undone at the top. <laughs> it's it's frozen solid or something, man. It's 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 on there good. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to collapse this boom. Jeez. Okay, there we go. I'm going to collapse the boom and I'm going to put on top of this a microphone. So that way we can at least see how it transmits noise. And unfortunately, I don't have any cheap shock mount. So the cheapest one I actually have in the house is the one that comes on a DD. V mic D3. So I'm going to screw that in here and I'm using a different microphone. Uh, so that way we can hopefully hear some pretty decent fidelity. So I've now mounted the microphone inside the shock mount on the boom pole directly. And we have the cable that can plug straight in to the back here. That went in pretty decently, all things considered. It's not too loose, it's not too tight. Effective. Okay. That at least plugs in well. Now, here's one thing that I don't like the end address on this uh, XLR for the internal coiled cable. The reason this is an issue is because if I plug in one of my cables that is priced about the same thing as the actual boom pole itself and plug it in, I now can't stand this thing up on the ground. It's not going to go without crushing my cable. So <laughs> let's actually test this thing out. If I shake this thing around a little bit, oh, yikes. Okay, so I anticipated this also, um, there is no, there, there is actually no built on way on a boom pole for you to strain relief it. And this is a lot of extra cable coming out the back. So what you normally would want to do is create some sort of a little loop here. So that way it will tie the excess cable to the side of the boom pole, still leaving a little bit of slack. Now, the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to unplug this so that way we can do this correctly. Normally professionals, we would use something called a bongo tie or perhaps a lasty band. This is a bongo tie. This is a lasty band. They're very, very elastic type band, more so than a regular rubber band you'd get at an office depot. And then they put this like dual sided kind of looks like a, a, a golfer's tee on both sides on, on the um, bongo tie, but on the lasty band, it's a ring. Now, if you don't have access to this and want to spend, let's say, however much it is for one of these two professional sound uh, products or professional products in general, then what you can always do, which is an option if you're trying to be on a discount, you know, if you're trying to be on a, on a budget here, you can take a rubber band and a key ring, loop it through this way. Now, this is by no means the same thing as Elastiband. It's by no means the quality. It's not as elastic. 
but at least it will hold for you. So what you can do is take a little bit of your slack of your cable here and looping this around, just like this, you can tie it back ever so slightly, loop the end of the rubber band around, and it's not pretty, but at least it will work and it will hold pretty ni nicely for you. Now, what this has done is it's taken up the slack off of the back of the boom. So that way it's not going to be extra weight wobbling and forcing the boom over to the side. And this is a liar type shock mount, which is an Envision series Rycoat shock mount. And you may not have access to something like this. Sorry, this is what I have access to. So we're going to use it. It's a very good shock mount. Uh, Rycoat makes good stuff. That looks like it is fairly good with it, with one exception. You don't want to mount a boom this far weighted backwards. What I usually do whenever I'm putting a microphone in a shock mount is I will find where the cable weights it and where the where the balance point is. So it's about right there. You see how it's right in the middle? I will grab it like that and center it perfectly in the middle of the shock mount right there. So when I do something like that, you notice that it is now even weight wise on this side and on this side. So if I hold this over somebody, it's going to be fairly easy, even, and it's not going to be front weighted. It's not going to be back weighted. People have different styles. That's the way I do it. Okay. Plugging this boom up right now. Okay. I might need the wind protection after all, which is going to further weight it backwards, but uh, we're going to do what we're going to do. So let me unplug this and add on this wind protection for this microphone. Okay, you hear that? That is sound transferring straight out of the shock mount directly down through to the microphone. I need to rebalance this. That's a lot of transmission. Normally, liars are not nearly this... Hear that? Jeez. Because this is actually... The boom is inside of here, and because this is strain relief, this cable is so cheap, it's transmitting a lot of noise. You hear that? That noise is transfer noise. If I touch the back of the cable, it is going straight through the boom pole into the microphone. If I do this with, on the cable I made, no such thing. And it's not just because it's farther away either. I could go straight into the microphone and it would do the exact same thing. But this cable here transmits a lot of noise straight to the boom. Listen. And then this part here is a lot more quiet. See that? Because it's being held on by the last band into the boom, or the poor man's last band in the boom. That's not an actual last band. Okay, so let's try this thing. If we extend this, you hear every bit of that, don't you? Come on. Ow. This thing hates me. And it should. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, right now it's extended only out about maybe nine feet. Okay, now that's full stick. Okay, so <laughs> if I hold this, oh wow, you can't shift your hand at all with a bounce. If you watch my video where I talk about how to shift your hand, it's a lot quieter than that if you do bounce it. But this is... I am barely touching this thing. On the foam. Oh, this is so bad. The Liar Shock Mount is actually good quality. It's holding a very good quality microphone, but everything is transferring straight into the boom. That's not good. All that transfer noise is terrible. So I can't even cue a little bit back and forth of the microphone. Otherwise you hear it transmit. You could almost hear my heartbeat through this thing because it transmits so much noise. I wonder if you could. No, you can't hear my heartbeat through it, but probably not, not far off. A little bit of a twist. Sounds like total garbage.
are you kidding me? You're locked in the out position? What is the clicking noise? Oh, you suck. Now, I'm not just putting on a show. This thing is that bad. Plastic collars, which transmit noise directly down the boom. The aluminum is loud. It's made of the cheapest stuff. Normally, if you have a five section boom, which is what this thing is, it would dissipate a little bit of that sound by the time it gets to the actual microphone because you're holding it and it's got to go through, through five layers of metal to get to the microphone cable on the inside, which is going up and then gonna escape out the top in order to get in there. But this entire thing is so noisy that even the cable. Oh, wow. Even the weight of the microphone shifting back and forth. The shot mount's quiet, but just the weight and the shifting of the connector. Oh, this is so bad, 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 bad. I have to take it apart. We are going to take this thing apart and see what makes it so bad on the inside. Ungreased, cheap plastic. All right, these cheap plastic threads are going to strip if you over tighten the boom, which is going to most likely happen in time simply because you have to be able to lock the thing. And the locking mechanism is garbage. All right, let's see what's underneath here. Oh, goody, a monopod design, which is what these little plastic, cheap plastic things, and then they have a cutout here so that way the groove matches. Okay, that is as much of the boom as I call it a boom, only barely over an inch is going to be sticking out of the aluminum. That's one of the reasons why they're able to, to get it as long as it is. Normally, a professional boom pole would have more stuck in there. You know, it's it's at least like this on an Ambien. It's like like this on a K-Tech. There, there's more actual pole inside, so that way it's stronger. This here, if you put any weight on it, it's going to collapse under its own weight. This thing is terrible in every possible way. Monopods are not designed to be quiet. They're designed to hold a camera relatively stiff and steady. But noise that transfers through a monopod doesn't matter because it doesn't make it into the picture. But it does make it into a boom pole if you make it in that design. Actually, I'm going to take off that knuckle. I should take this off. This is the compression ring. There's no lubricant anywhere on this plastic or inside of here. And this is the compression ring they have. There's no material of any kind that is rubbery, that is anything like you, what you would want to have on the inside of a boom in order to compress the ring. Right now, it's relying on sheer pressure from you cranking the thing down in those threads in order to lock this by pinching it tighter and tighter like this. It basically pinches it tighter and tighter until it pitches off the aluminum. This is a terrible design in every way. There's no stopping friction force at all. There's no rubber. There's no anything. This thing is just going to be... It's going to be stopping only by sheer willpower and by you cranking it. This is not a good design at all. Oh, this thing hates me. You know that I'm trashing you, don't you? I mean, obviously I'm not going to throw it in a trash can. 
I'm going to hold on to this thing just because I'm going to show it to people as uh, what not to do if you're designing a boom pole. That's the way the compression ring works right there. This little piece of plastic goes in there, and as you crank it down, it simply puts pressure on it until it finally has no choice but to lock. To take this whole thing apart. Because the plastic doesn't want to go back in this plastic knuckle at the top. So the O-ring, or the compression ring, I should say, doesn't want to go inside the plastic. Because on the inside here, it fits in there seamlessly all the way up to the very, very top. But in this, because I've, I put it into the segment the correct way, it's not wanting to... This isn't wanting to slide in there. So I probably, you see these little ridges right there? It's probably designed so that way you have to jam it into this ring on the inside and it's not going to happen as long as it's unconnected disconnected. The compression ring is going to be squeezed in, fit into the inner circle, and then opened up at the tip so that hopefully, now it's all the way at the very, very tip like that. Hopefully it will keep its noisy butt in place while I slide this. Oh, that's right. The segment is over my shoulder. Read my lips. I hate monopods. You in there now? You happy? Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead and try to hurt me. That's fine. You know I hate you, don't you? I know you want to. I'm not going to give you the chance. It's back together. Oh, joy. So I disconnected it, took this segment apart, and now the internal coiled cable is jammed up on the inside of here. It's not even allowing me to compress it all the way down now. The only way to get it back in there at this point would be to flip it upside down so the internal coil cable enters the thinner segment here on top and then close it all the way down. Now that's a lot less than ideal because now you can't collapse the thing vertically without... So the internal coiled cable did not even last one cycle. It didn't even close one, well, I take that back because I did open it and close it maybe three or four times. But now it's jammed on the inside. Brilliant. Piece of crap. And I'm pulling the foam back to reveal I'm going to have to test that now because it almost sounds like the aluminum would be quieter than the foam. Okay, now let's see which is noisier, the handling noise on the foam or the handling noise on the aluminum boom pole itself. The foam is noisier than the actual boom pole itself. So it means that they must have given you that to try to say, oh, look, this is foam. It's going to help your handling noise. But let the truth be known, all it's going to do is help keep your hands a little bit warmer in the cold weather. My cable does not deserve to be in this thing. Sorry I put you through that. You can't loosen it and extend it or collapse it and then lock it again very effectively at all. This thing is, honestly, it is not even worth the $60 in my opinion. There's not a thing that is done right on this monopod with a 3816 thread at the top. It is cheap plastic. It's aluminum. It's a piece of noisy foam over an aluminum boom that's actually quieter without the foam. The connectors go inside of things just fine, probably because they don't want you to have any issues with that because then you would blame the boom pole. Not on this side or the other side, male or female. Yay.
If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything. That's at least what they tell you to do, right? If I were going to be doing this, painter's poles used to be used before they had modern day boom pole solutions. So you can obviously get yourself a painter's pole, externally wrap it with an XLR. It would probably be quieter than this. And all you have to do is get a, one of those painter pole screw type ends to a 316 thread adapter. And they do sell those. I can't remember the websites because I don't go there. I have real boom poles that even my shortest boom pole is over 10 times the cost of this thing and works so much better. So thank you for watching this episode of Sound Speeds and watching me get frustrated with this $60 boom pole. I hope it will give you some insight. And if you are on a budget, I understand. Okay, I do understand. Sometimes consignment, uh, you know, sections of professional uh, websites, like for example, True Audio has a great consignment area. If you go to True Audio's website, trueaudio.com, I'll put a link down in the description, and then you click on used, go to boom poles, and they'll usually have great deals on boom poles. This here is not worth the $60 in my opinion. There's not going to be anything I can do to make this thing quiet short of cutting the cable out of it and not using it, externally wrapping it with a good cable that doesn't transmit noise like this one here, the sound speed special. And that's it. I mean, it's it doesn't lock correctly. The microphone that's on there picks up all the handling noise in the world from the cable itself, the connectors, the pole, even the the foam is noisier than the actual aluminum underneath it. So there's nothing redeeming about this thing in my opinion. I'll tr I'll I'll try to think of something good about it. If I can, I'll put it down in the description. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this episode of Soundspeech. Be sure to tune in the future for more waste of $60 and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.